I will do it. You don't. Shut up. It's about 10 to 10, Wendy. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm hearing. Right. Yes, I've got my green double. Red eyes. Yeah. Got my red eyes. Marjorie Marbon. And the frosty. What else? I'm a twinkle, yes. I'm a long shank hook. I've got 12. Do a 10. 12. 12 or 10. Okay, do some 12. No, it needs to be a 10. It needs to be a 10. If I can find it. Right. I will do. Just finding a hook. Right, are we all ready? What I'm going to do for you now is my own pattern of a damsel. Um, it's a floating damsel. So it's got a few little quirky bits on it. So tie and thread on. Ooh, go down. What size hook is that? It's a, t a long shank 10. You can go smaller if you want, but I'm doing it so you can see it. And sometimes if you do a new pattern, it's sometimes ideal to do it on a bigger hook first and then go down in size because then you can get your scale right. So I want some marabou for the tail. I'm tying it in and cutting the, breaking the fibres off the length I want. Tapering that on the underbody and tying the ends down. Underneath the tail once I want to contain those fibres in the up position. So just a couple of threads underneath. Find it. And a couple of strands of crystal tied in halfway to the tail point, folded over so they're sitting on top of the hook <coughs> but sort of partly down the sides, and cut those to the same length as your tail. So by putting two in, you end up with four strands. I've then got some ver of the very thin foam. And I'm going to tie the foam in down the body because I don't want it to create a tapered body. I want a big lump at the back end. So I've gone down as far as the thorax area. Is it oval? It isn't it? Mm. Oval gold. And that's not coming off. Oh, it is. I've got an end. Oval gold for the rib. <coughs> And again, I'm tying it in down the body to create so I've not got a, a lump at the back end. Right. I'm going to dub the body. I'm just going to softly dub this because I want to create a hairy body you 
you're right. <laughs> so by making a loop <coughs> and taking the thread out of the way, put my twister in. It's a Spectra Blend from Orvis. It's quite a soft one, but it's still got a little bit of glint in it. But I can still get that hairy, just a little bit. I don't want it like seal's fur. Um, I don't want it that hairy, but I want to create just a little bit of... Not got quite enough, so I'll do it. Do another one. No, is it? Yeah, just a fraction more. This one's got quite a long thorax. It's a long shank hook, yeah. It's only a fraction short, but it just um, it's got too much of a taper on it. So. And then rib the body. The Sorry? You've forgotten the bead. <laughs> What bead? <laughs> John uses beads on his dry flies. <laughs> oh, it will have beads on. I will please you with beads, but it won't. Doesn't go on as a a gold head at the front. Right. I have then taken goose biots, but they are quite long ones, as you can see from there, and I put one knot in them. <laughs> and I've done them beforehand because I know how long it takes. They're not dead easy to do. Where's it gone? That is. But by, in this case, I do rip it off. I'm going to do one for you, provided I can. Oh, come off! I have to pull it off. And again, it's just a matter of because it's a flat one. You have to be brutal with it and fold it. But I can get, when I get the light right, get my hook through. Doesn't want to go. I couldn't find the little hole in it. My living room is covered in dead bits of goose fire. No, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't want to go to me. So the hook really does help in this case to be able to pull it through. And then we go and fold. foam over and I've left it on because it's going to be used again and at that point we tie in one leg and another one on the opposite side And then just come up a fraction. Get off. I've cut the ends off so I can see where I'm working. And tie a second one in. Just ever such a frac. Oh, yes, okay, fine. You did a boogie bit. Lost it. Yeah. I can see it. It's alright, I know. I've got some extras. Just in case. 
and I've just left a little space between the back one and that next one and again one on the other side come forwards thank you and then I want two more in it's a six legged damsel just to make it difficult for yeah, you. Four legged ones down here. <laughs> Do four legs if you want. Great. I don't mind. They're concentrating, they're all quiet. Just <laughs> all the sort of to try to tie on these legs. We'd have run out of hook by now. <laughs> That's why I said use a big hook <laughs> if you ever do copy it because, yeah, you can run out of hook. Not done yet. I've got to see where it's going yet, haven't it? It's got to see where it's going yet, yeah. <laughs> so I've got the legs. We're then going to do a little bit of dubbing. <laughs> <laughs> I like to make it as difficult as I can. going to work down. But it started out so promising with the tail. <laughs> <laughs> what, you would be able to do it? I'm just wiggling between the legs just to create an underbody. If you wanted to, you can tie two legs in, dub it, tie two more legs in and dub it. There's no reason why you need to fiddle. But you can get all six in in one go and then just dub between it. Much better wiggling between the legs, though, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> so much fun. I think we're going to stand at the back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's enjoyable. Right. And again, I don't make my own eyes. I buy them done. So I've got two little red eyes. Shock of horrors. And that one doesn't want to go. Oh. I like little tiny. Yeah, it goes right at the front, isn't it? <laughs> I know. I guess it's coming over between the eyes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You've got it. So, figure of eight. Your thread's at the front. I'm just going to do a half hitch. <laughs> just, ca just in case. Because you're so close to the front. Bring over the foam over your eyes and tie it down and you want the eyes to peek out either side not like that it's gone round that's it making sure you've got plenty of thread on there that you when you cut it off it doesn't come undone yes so cut the foam and a whip finish I got asked this. I did this oh a long, long while ago, didn't I? And the customer well, gave me the, the book, pattern. It's been in the book about four years. Yeah, and uh, I looked at it and I thought, ah, buy it legs, ah. <laughs> but it does work. Would you always use that sort of colour green foam, or would you go more? No, you can vary it. Just don't be sure you had at the time, didn't it? <laughs> I've not found any real sagey green. I think you can get it. But there's nothing to stop you colouring it a little bit so with a felt tip. Yeah. Just get the leg where I want it. The difference between Dale's foam and that is you can buy that from Hobbycraft at the pounder sheet, and Dale's is about £4 for the yeah. size. Anyway, I'll pass that to. Yeah, this is a bit more expensive, isn't it? So it proves that you can do anything if you... Hey, <laughs> 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 now I'm doing the red, raise red. Oh, raise red, oh my God. 
Okay. This one will go through. But... No, it won't. It's dead easy. Yeah. No, the next one is. Cause a stir. I did this at um, a river club. They they only fish rivers, and they looked at me and they said, "Wendy, we're river men." I said, "Yeah, what about it? It's an emerger, but you're using marabou." Yeah, what about it? <laughs> I threw about half a dozen at them and said, "Fish with them." And about eleven o'clock the next morning. I've got his phone call saying, you know that pattern you tied last night? I said, which one? He said, the brown and orange thing. I said, yeah, can we have two dozen, please? I said, I thought you were a river group. He said, yeah, but they work. And they'd been out fishing and caught what they wanted. So, yeah, okay, fine. So, again, it's a long shank, but it's a long shank 12. And... Yeah, I've got marabou. And it needs to be brownish. It's not really strict as to which shade of brown. And you literally take four or five fibres. And I mean four or five fibres. And you tie that in. So that's brown. Chocolate. It's chocolate or brown, yeah. Marabou. Marabou, yeah. It's not easy to get brown, I must admit, but... I've had all sorts of coloured browns and they all seem to work. Do you sell it, Ray? Right? I do, but I don't know that it's been that popular because the England team's been using it, but they know what we've got. If you want a bit, just take a couple of plumes out there because... Well, there might be the odd bag. Yeah, you can... Then tell them that. What? That, yeah. Two plumes uh, go wrong. mega stout. You're tying these because you're only using those those you few fibres. Yeah. I had one... One of my customers I tied a lot for him and he gave one to his friend. And his friend proudly went fishing and he said, that fly's no good, it doesn't catch fish. So his name was Ray, uh, not my Ray, another one. And he said, well, can I have a look at your fly you've tied? So he passes the fly over. He said, well, it's not working because you've tied it like a lure. He said, it's too much marabou in it. Oh, right. Said, That's what it should look like. And he went away, caught fish straight away. Mm. So the next segment is cactus yeah. chenille, but the fine. A yeah, a river fly. Well, in Ireland. Yeah, yeah, it works. I got pestered last week in Ireland to tie a dozen up very quickly because it works so well on Corrib. And on rivers. And even then, the gilly, it's from it, a gilly came and asked for them and he poo pooed it. But apparently, it's called Raised Red after him sitting there, right? And it's been called. Wendy's worm. Wendy's wind up. Wendy's, Wendy's worm, worm, and now the usual. In Ireland, it's called the usual. Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> so, I just ever cease to amaze me. Right. So it's a quarter of the shank is cactus. The next quarter, and I've put it away. Marabou. And all you need is a few fibres of marabou, and just dub it. Brown again. <coughs> so if you if you cut any off for the tail, you can actually use the cut off bits and just dub it. And all you're doing is a quarter. So the next segment, which is there, and tie it down. Go down. That's it. Right. Now you'll recognise the front bit. I'm positive you will. But not the way I'm going to tie it. This is Steve Parton's fluorescent wool. Which we still have. <laughs> <laughs> We've still got them. 
I coloured everything that there was because yeah. I used so much of it in white yeah. for breathers and posts and everything. So tie that in. And you can do this with any ginger hackle that you want. Um, doesn't matter whether it's genetic or not. I tend to use genetic because I, I I like it done with genetic. And pull your fibres back and cut the tip out. So the tip's usually too small a fibre. Just taper it and tie that in at the back end. So I want the hackle to face backwards as in a soldier palmer. It's got no rib on it but it doesn't alter the strength of the fly. Still quite a strong fly. So I'm winding the orange for the body and tying it down. Half itch. Half itch is help if you're struggling with anything. Just lock it off, it doesn't add to it. And then wind the hackle. And it's palmered, it's not tight turns but it's quite tightly palmered. So that's three, four, five, and a couple at the front. So it's quite heavily palmered and tie that hackle down. And this is the same pattern that you saw in the vise before we started. And I'll pass them both round. It, we tried it in black and green, uh, black and green, which there's a lot of flies in black and green work. Done it in old green. But didn't work. So we've done it in all green. It's only been used once in green and caught a 12 and a half pound rainbow. Yeah. <laughs> so. They're the two. And they shout at me when we're up in Lancaster and hell. Got a big fish. What's it called? Ray's red. Ray's red. Okay, we'll go yeah. with that. Hmm. What would you call it if it had been red? I don't you know. Did it get orange and brown? No, but it was. <laughs> no, it was, it was a little bit more red when it started, but the colour disappeared from Steve's, so we just kept the name. It's it, it, more of an orange now. Yeah, it's hot orange. But, but are they fishing it deep? On an well, intermediate. We're fishing on intermediate. We have tried it. It actually does work with a gold head on as well, but not so well. Oh, that'd be well for you, John. <laughs> it has caught a salmon. It's called a salmon, it's called a big seat. They've done it big for salmon. It's yeah. Seat it's a bit like a crabble, it? Yeah. It's it's certainly, it certainly took some sea trout. It certainly took some. It's caught in every size you've tied it, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it has. It's, it's got it. Eh? I've got my sheep's wool one. Well, I can find my sheep's wool. I'm not sure where I put it. Oh, it is. I want an up eye. Yeah, I'm just going to get a hook. Get rid of that so I can. That's, that's what I want. I've got hooks everywhere at the moment. Pardon? I'm going to do a parachute dry and I was in the position where 
I had the pattern sent me from Ireland and it's going back a long while and I was a bit naive to what materials were and for the life of me I could not work out what the material was so I substituted it what I thought and sent the flies over but put a note in saying do you know what the material for the body is and he came back and he said it's sheep's wool and I said it's too long for sheep's wool where do you get sheep's wool that long and he told me so I said right okay I know where I'm coming from and I've had quite a bit given me that's the length of it it's a Leicestershire Longhorn and it's one of the rare breeds and yeah look that's all one fabric and that's why I couldn't work out what it was the way that it was tied it didn't make sense at all so yeah and it's quite a crude fly um, so before any of you sort of go Ugh, it is a crude fly you tie in the end of the wool and I'm using white thread because, again, this pattern shows. You then tighten it up and we wind the body. Bringing it upwards and tying it down to the shank in a post. And then we double it. So I make that bit bigger post. Snip off the... And just tidy that up. And then up the post to make a base for your hackle. And again, it's one of those patterns that you can actually use whatever hackle you fancy. But the original pattern was a ginger. And it's tying the hackle. And if you leave a little bit of hackle stalk facing out the back, when you come to put it up the stem, your hackle doesn't start until it's part way up the stem so you're taking it up without any fibres on that hackle being there so as you come down you can wind it straight down the post and you get all the hackles sitting exactly as you want them to do this one good side down won't you? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's good side upwards so it sits down I want the hackles to sit down or it should do ah. where's it gone it's not going to get the better of me And when you've got a little bit, let me cut that off first, then I can do the whip finish. Hey? Eh? Yeah, I've got plenty of hackle. I just want to get this done. It's not going to be quite long enough. Ball for John Smith. Just left myself enough. That's it. And then it get a hold of the wall and just trim it. 
So you've just got a little post. And when you varnish it, you're varnishing it deep in that post, right at the very bottom, so that it doesn't go into the hackle. And I say it's not a pretty, pretty fly by any means, but it does work. So what sheep did you say that was? Less Less is your longhorn. You can get some glue that thing anyway, you can get Have a play with it. It's ringlets when you look at it. Yeah, Angora's too soft. It floats because the lanolin on the sheep's wool. So it's natural sheep's wool that's got the lanolin on it. And uh, it works brilliantly. Pseudo. Yeah. If I can find it. It's in the back of my box. Right, let's just drop that away. That's it. Where's it gone? I've done with it. You've got it over there? It was in the back of it. It's here. It's alright, we've got it. <laughs> No, they were, they were trying to get it from the shore. I won't do pink. Do yellow. Eh? Yeah. And then put a hackle on it. What colour hackle? Choose that. Yeah. Yeah. Wet fly eight yeah. or one. Yeah. 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 I'm going to in a second. It's ever so strong. It's really strong. What do they use the wool for now? Do they spin it? Yes. Yeah, it is a spun one. It's beautiful, yeah. Well, I, I found out about it because we were at a craft fair and there was a girl there that was using it. And she actually has the... We have got a contact for it, haven't we? Very strong, isn't it? Yeah. It's very strong. You don't realise how strong it is till you start pulling it and tugging it. and Ooh, yes. But you, if you feel your fingers afterwards, you'll feel the lanolin on it. Excuse me, Wendy, what did you call that fly you've just done? With the, the warning? It, it, it hasn't got a name. It hasn't got a name that I know of. Okay. Um, sheep's, sheep's wool, wool parachute. parachute. We call it. Okay. You won't find it in any book. No. No, okay. No. It's a weird Irish pattern. <laughs> and I always say they're weird Irish. But they come up with some really good patterns and that's what it's about. This one is just a little bit of weird material that you can either take or leave. And it, it's got its uses, but I will say, has it got its uses for every fly? No. But I've used it for nymphs and I've also used it for um, dabblers. And you see, it's like organza, but without all the fibres in between. It's called pseudo hackle. So you've got the outside edges that you can use to wind, but you can cut it any length that you want. So you can have a long hackle or a short hackle. So I'm just going to cut about halfway along this. <clears throat> now I apologise if it's not dead level because I haven't got my longer scissors with me. It's much easier if you've got a long pair of scissors, you can cut straight down it. I've left them in my other box. Oh, 
Is it? I know. I cut back going to yeah. Ireland and I've took them out. I'll just cut through it. That's it. Where, where do you get this material from? Is it specifically for fly dressing or what? What, this? Yeah. 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 It is available. It is it? available. Um, the person that's selling it at the moment. Funky's selling it. Yeah, uh, Funky Fly. Toby's got it. Toby Merrigan's got it. Um, but this came from Ireland. Um, the Irish lad is doing um, more patterns of it. Where's my yellow? Finished products, Lawrence Finney. Yeah, Lawrence Finney. Finney's flies. And he's, this is actually UV, believe it or not. And he's doing all different... Where's my bag? All different colours. There's pinks, reds, oranges, olives, it's browns. It's hair isn't it? It's hairline. it's hairline, but he's dyeing it the colours, and it makes absolutely super thoraxes on nymphs, and it doesn't look synthetic in any way when that's done. So it's just taking a normal fly and using the hackle in a different way. So I've prepared it by cutting that those front few fibres off. So I can actually tie that in. Tie it on the back of the hook so it will wind correctly. There go. That's it. Your first one is just making sure you get that it's sitting in the right position. And once you've got the first one, go. Doesn't want to go tonight. Wants to play silly devils. Undo it. <laughs> <coughs> That's it. It's gone now. Just didn't want to go where I wanted it to go. And all I'm doing is winding it like we would a, a hackle. Straight down the hook. All back. So it's touching turns and that core is making the body as you go down. And he's also doing lots of different feathers that are UV. Um, he's bleaching and dyeing uh, partridge, French partridge and um, pheasant, which is what they they use a lot of the, the French partridge and that for dabblers. So it's French partridge, but you can just see the little bar in there. But it is French partridge that's been bleached and dyed. But again, it's UV. So I'm just going to tie in the tip. Snip off that. Snip off those two fibres that's bugging me. Half hitch. Hackle pliers. Fold the feather and wind. Pull the fibres back. Wind. Cross my thread. Always take it across my thread. I never hold it up in the air and then tie across. As soon as I've taken it across my thread, it's trapped. Neat in the head. But it's using your imagination to tie a fly with a new material, but adapting an old pattern into something new.
It's quite bright. I've deliberately done it in yellow, but it doesn't. Nothing stops you doing it in whatever colours you fancy. But I say he's doing um, green Peters, Peter Ross, anything where um, it's using CD um, using seals fur, and you want a bit of a leggy look. He's putting that on. Yeah, he's used it on bumbles, but I think it's a bit heavy for bumbles myself, but. That's personal choice. All right? Yeah. You all happy? Yeah. Have you learned something? Yes. yes. Good. I think a round of applause is all that. I've known Wendy for 